Hi guys, I'm Ram Agarwal. You are watching my channel 52 Pixels. Let's get started. Hi guys, in today's tutorial, we are going to see how to change the light source and how to work with the shadows using the light sources in Photoshop 3D. So as we learned in the previous tutorials, we have seen how to uh, add the depth of field in the uh, in the 3D object. We have seen how to work with the basic workspace of the 3D and we have seen a lot of stuff using the current view, the background view, the text view and everything. Now what we are going to see is how to change the light. So to start with, this is the uh, rendering that what I did over here. Again, it's not a complete rendered image. I just rendered it around 5% or 10% and then I just stopped it. But anyways, it's, we are good to go. So here we have our 3D object and now we have to add a light. So before adding lights, what I'm going to do is just from this custom view, I'll just save this custom view as custom view 2 is fine. I'll save this view and I'll shift to the front view over here like this. So now I've got the front view and as you can see we already have some light over here but I don't want this light because this is the environment light, this is the ambient light. What I want to do is I want to add personalized different types of lights, um, kind of like infinite light or spotlight or everything. So for adding those other type of light what we have to do is just tap on this bulb uh, kind of a button over here. So if we tap on this uh, bulb uh, button, we have these three options that is new point light, new spotlight and new infinite light. So we are going to work with all these three and let's see which works the best for us. So let's start with working with the new point light. So I just uh, plotted this point light over here. So I can just move it uh, like in any direction that I want. I can take it at the top as well but as you can see we, we are not able to see it clearly and what is the position of that we don't know exactly so to determine the position we will have to move from uh, one axis to different axis so currently we are looking at it from the front if I just go to current view and if I go to the right hand side view I will be able to see how far is this object so it is over here again I will tap on this point light and I will just try to drag it uh, near the object I guess I messed up big time actually I don't know where I am so I'll just go to current view once again and I'll just go to custom view 2 and I'm going to get my view back so that is one benefit of using this saved custom presets now again I can just go to this option called as point light 1 uh, and I can just use this move on z axis option to move it near to the uh, 3d object and using all these points i can just move it anywhere i want and once done what i can do is just go to filter uh, in the 3d option and i can just go to render 3d layer and it is going to render the 3d layer for me so as you can see we won't wait for it to get completely rendered we just want to see how the light looks so I guess we've got an idea of how it looks so I can just press escape key so as you can see the light source is this and it has given me the light in all these directions where this lorem ipsum layer is covered and we have the shadows over here so it looks very natural it looks very realistic and I definitely like this one but if we compare it to the ease of use it is not very easy to use it's a little tough to use and you you are going to need a lot of time to get a hang of it uh, until you just find it very useful so again i'll have to move it a little more behind so that i have a clearer view but as you can see we had the environment's ambient light as well so that's why we were not able to see actually the beam of this point light so i'll just go to environment over here and after going to this environment layer i have something called as this ibl so if i just turn this off the ambient light is going to get turned off and the only light source that I have is this point light one. So now if I go to 3D and render this 3D layer, it is going to give me the exact output of how this point light one is going to look. So as you can see, if I just hit escape key right now, as you can see, this is the uh, source of light and this is how it is going to look after adding the point light in this particular area. So these are the shadows and these are the 
like this is the intensity of light i can again go to this point light one and i can increase or decrease the intensity depending on my requirements so currently intensity was at 100% i increased it to 305% and now if i render i'll have a brighter light but it doesn't look good right but given if it is brighter but i don't have that clear view of what the image looks like what the 3d looks like because most of the text is reflecting the light back and it doesn't look that good so we'll have to adjust the intensity of light according to that but most of the times intensity of light between um, let's say 75 to 125 percent just works well with any form of image but if you want a stronger light or something we can just work around with that and see how it looks with Uh, with respect to the 3D layer that we created, but at 116% intensity, the point light is looking like this. Really, very happy with this one. But now let's move on to a next type of light. That is, I'll just delete this one first. So I'll just tap on this dustbin icon, and it's going to get deleted. Now I'll tap on this bulb icon once again, and we are going to use a spotlight this time. So we use a point light. Now it is the time to use spotlight. spotlight is one of the most difficult uh, form of light like light source in photoshop it's because it's really hard to see where it is going and how it is working and i'm still not you know very much used to this one because it's just very tough so we have to switch the views a lot of time and we have to see how it is looking from the top view from the bottom view and then we can have an idea of how it is looking so as you can see the beam of light is pointing towards the the text but not all of the text is getting covered only a little part of the text is getting covered so we'll have to move this uh, like we have to change the angle so that we have what we wanted and it's really very tough actually so i don't know it is somewhat like this i'll have to take it a little more behind So that I can do using the current view as the right hand side view or the left hand side view, any view which you are comfortable. So after going to the right hand side view, I get to know that this object is projecting the spotlight from the top towards the text. So the light is actually going over here, which I don't want. I want the light to be on the text. So I can just move it near the text, and hopefully it is on the text now. So again, if I go to current view and I switch to my saved view, that is the custom view two. Let's see how it is looking. I don't know if it's projecting the light on the text, so I'll have to again adjust the angles and all. So I guess now it is working well. I can just go to 3D layer and render the 3D layer. So this is how the spotlight looks. The intensity is 100%. and this is how it is projecting the light so if i just hit the escape key this is how it looks so this is the main point in focus because that is the spotlight so this is the circular region in focus and over here out of this region the light is getting faded away but i have a basic general idea of how this shadows are going to look and how this light is getting projected i can again smoothen the shadows using the shadow layer so i can just smooth the shadows to around 30 or 40 percent, but I personally like a little, you can say, sharper shadows because sharper shadows actually look good for me. I don't know. I like that one, and it is actually really hard. I I, I don't know like how to explain that to you, but it's really hard to work with this uh, spotlight tool. But either way, if you get a hang of this tool, it's a really good tool. If you really want to use it in some of your 3d uh, images or sketches but for me or for you as a beginner it is going to be a little hard and if you get a hang of it it's just amazing too so as you can see after getting rendered it is looking somewhat like this and the shadows are looking smoother now because the shadow smooth softness is around 30% so the shadows are not that sharp they are looking a little smooth and this is how we can use the spotlight now the time to use a next type of light that is called as infinite light so if i tap on this one that is new infinite light it gives me this toolbar over here which is actually new infinite light is really simple to use 
but for that to work you need to have the ambient light so that you get to see what is happening with the light so this is the control bar for the light and i can just easily drag the direction and change the direction of light so this is the source of light and light is going to get projected in this direction somewhat like this or now the source of light is this and the light is going to get projected in this direction so now that we know that where is the source of light and how the light is going to work i can again go to environment and just check this ipl option off so that it's completely dark now i can go to 3d layer and render the 3d layer so as you can see it is the best part of photoshop 3d like it's the best light source because it is really easy to use we can easily change the angles and it is not like point point light or spotlight where just a specific region gets covered but because it is infinite light it is just covering every part of the image and it just comes from infinite infinite distance and it just gives a very smooth and a good effect again we can change the uh, shadows or the intensity of light with infinite light one as well so it's totally dependent on what you want you can change the angles you can change the sh uh, shadow softness you can change the intensity you can even change the color so if i want um, let's say if i want red color and intensity should be a little higher that is 170 and i want smoother shadows so softness is 40 percent now if i go to 3d and render this 3d layer the color of light is going to be red and the shadows as you can see the shadows are smooth the color of light is red and the intensity is 170 percent so it is really easy to use and it's very user friendly you can definitely use it uh, the 3d projects that you are making and apart from that if we just turn on the environment light that is the ambient light that photoshop provides it can give better effects depending on what ambient color light you have and what is the intensity of this one but as you can see over here we have ambient light as well as the red color light and smoother shadows so it really adds to the effect of that kind of a cool 3d object where we have light coming from different angles and it is really easy to use so today as you can see we learned three different types of light that is the point light the spotlight and the infinite light of which the infinite light is the best one according to me and we learned to use the environment light and how to change the different views so that we get a per perfect view of what angle the light is getting projected at and it is actually a really good feature so well that's it for today guys if you found this video to be helpful please like the video and in case of any queries or suggestions please feel free to reach out to me through the comments with that being said it's me ramagarwal signing off for the day see you in the next one thank you